up here, gonna be working on a project I've been meaning to get to for quite some time. What that project involves is my tractor. And the first day I bought this thing, got it home, I parked it in this little lean-to. And that lean-to was great and all. However, what ended up happening was when I backed out of the lean-to, not being used to the dimensions of the tractor, I knocked that top light right off. First day. I haven't hit anything since, but that's been the first day. And uh, I got to get it fixed because winter's coming again. And I said I'd fix it before last winter and I never got around to it. So what you see up there is a bunch of rubber covering a big gaping hole in the top plastic. So I got to get that taken off because I'm going to get that hole fixed so that I can sand it, maybe touch it up with some paint and make it look a little better. So let's head on up the ladder here. And here's what we're working with. So as you can tell here, this is just some, I don't know what that is, an old inner tube or something. And uh, it's more or less covering a bunch of tuck tape, which is covering a big hole. This is what it should look like. So you can see there, looks pretty, pretty good. That's what it should look like. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take some, uh, take some time, go in, get some tools together, come back out, get this taken off, see what we're dealing with. Mix up some Bondo or body filler and I'm gonna give it a go. So let's see how we make out here. Okay. Now it's been quite a while since I stand over here. It's been quite a while since I put this piece of rubber up here. I had intended of I had intended for it to only be temporary and just like many things in life, priorities take over and you don't get around to it. But today being one of those days, I finally thought about it and thought, hey, I got a few minutes, so that's why I'm out here trying to cross it off the list. So, I don't actually even remember how big the hole is in this piece of plastic. It's been that long. And just like any good MacGyver job, copious amounts of tape. So let's see if we can get this stuff off. So here's a good look at the mounting plate. So if you ever get into a situation where you need to get the light back into operation quick and you don't want to do all the body work, this is what I did. There's the piece of metal. I don't even know what it is. A little piece of sheet metal almost. Just screwed it to the leftover plastic, put something to keep it waterproof and it still functions pretty well. So this actually might be what I leave here and then just put the Bondo over it. Um, if I take it off here, if I take it off here, what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to fill in that hole anyway, so maybe this will just stay there. I don't know yet. Okay, so what I've decided is I'm going to leave this metal mounting bracket in place. This I made last year when I, or two years or three years ago, when I initially broke the light off. So I'm going to leave that in place. Using the fiberglass repair kit, I'm just going to go right over top of that, and hopefully that's going to seal it off. So. If you're in Canada and you're looking for what I'm using, this is what I'm using. It's made by Moto Master, which is from Canadian Tire. So it looks like this thing's gonna have everything I need in it. So let's see what we got here. Looks like some mixing cups, two of those. Here's our fiberglass cloth and our polyester resin. So we got that. And what else we got in here? I guess that's more pieces of fiberglass, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the liquid hardener. Some instructions. And two uh, two sticks here for mixing. So that's what that's what it comes with right there. So I guess I'm gonna read the instructions because I've never done this before. Make sure I do it right the first time. And I've cleaned the surface, so I took all that red tuck tape off, cleaned the surface and then i think i'm ready to go so let's read the instructions and see where we end up
All right guys, so as you can tell, I forgot I didn't just have that area to fix. I also had a few cracks over here, one here, one here, 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 and I broke off the antenna. I forgot about all these because I did them quite a while ago as well, and I filled in the gap in the meantime with silicone caulking. The silicone was a headache to get off this surface, so I sort of smeared it all over because it, at the time I just needed something to keep the water out. It was probably not optimal time to uh, to do a patch job, so I just smeared all that over. Well, that took me a really long time, as you saw, to get off. So I used a steel brush, I used sandpaper, all that stuff. Some, uh, what else they use there? Paint thinner to get right down and get some of the oils off. This is the best I can do at this point. I don't want to put any more time into it. So what I'm doing is I've cleaned this thoroughly with soap. And now I'm just going to make sure to get any remaining water off. Because it started raining on me looks like it's done for now but uh, it started raining on me so I got to get this dry before I go ahead and put the actual fiberglass repair on so I got a bit of a job ahead of me I've got like six patches I'm gonna do here for a guy who's never done any fiberglass repair this is gonna be interesting I don't plan on making this look 100% if I wanted 100% I'd be heading back to the factory grabbing a brand new plastic top piece but I don't want to spend all that dough on one, so that's why I'm patching it. And uh, hopefully this turns out well. So, looking good to me. I'm gonna go get things mixed up and we'll get down to work. Well guys, you know I must be getting serious when I'm putting the gloves on. What I got in front of me is the kit, the instructions. Over here I got a separate, separate rather, uh, setup. And what this is, this is all the uh, the mesh that's gonna go on with the, uh, with the polyester resin and the hardener. So this is gonna go with that. What I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna head over here. Got my container, got a brush, my polyester resin, got this stuff, basically the hardener gets mixed in with this, stirred with this, and then I take it over to this station, which I have set up. This is the bottom of a uh, tote, that's just a, or a lid of a tote, and I've set up some uh, aluminum foil here. I'll put the resin all over this, uh, this patch here, and I'm actually not going to start with that one. I'm going to start with a smaller one, probably start with these guys. So I'm going to put the uh, the resin all over this and then I'm going to head over to the tractor, lay it out. And once I lay it out, I'm going to use the brush to push it into place, put more resin over top of it. And I'm going to do two layers. So one pushed into place, two over top of it. And hopefully that works. That's going to go up there. Oops, I almost forgot. Got to prep the surface first. Get the second layer on there. Not bad for Russian. Oh, for, I didn't prep it again. One more and then I gotta get the next piece. I wanna do this big piece on this, this resin batch. Cause if I don't, I'm gonna run out of material. Then we're euchred. Oh, good enough for me. I'm not gonna sit here and admire it. Okay. It's getting sticky. Operation move quickly. You can tell it's reacting. It's a, it's called an exothermic reaction. Kind of a nerdy word, I know, but 
means it's giving off heat as it reacts. So you can feel the heat in your hands. Maybe sometime I'll tell you why I know that, but regardless, let's just get this done. Okay, wish me luck. It's getting real sticky. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good, hopefully. What a mess. Holy. Look at this extra piece. What was going on here? Jeez Louise. Okay, just before that gets incredibly hard, oh, get off me. I'm gonna go mix just a touch more to finish that piece. Probably what I should do is just touch that up just a bit. Well, how would you describe this? Hmm, one word. Panic. No, it's not too bad. I would suggest as much as you can lay out ahead of time, do it. Because it's going to uh, give you more time to get all the air bubbles out and get the resin spread correctly things like that where you should be spending your time especially if you're a rookie like me it's getting real sticky here so we're probably just about at the end of this one then we're gonna move on I got a few other little doodads to do with this job holy smokes so one thing I'm learning very quickly and you may already know this if you've done fiberglass before if you cut it to the exact size you need and then you apply the resin, it's going to stretch out. And that is something I am learning very, very quickly. So it's way bigger than what I expected. No, that's not bad, all things considering. Could be worse, quite frankly. Well guys, I'm gonna call it at that. I've had enough of this for today. Well folks, here's the finished product. So as you can see, I just took a little saw, trimmed off the excess down here. I took a sander, rough sanded it, take off any of the loose bits. I'm going to let this dry because I just wiped it with water. After I let it dry, I may decide to put some sort of a finish sand on it, or I may just paint it up just like it is. So I think overall pretty good. Now, if you have a look at this side, same thing. So you can see I did all the way down the side, trimmed it flush with the bottom of this plastic piece. And overall, I think it looks pretty well. Pretty good. So if you're going to tackle this project and try to use some fiberglass and patch up your roof yourself, well, that's just great. Now, if you're going to paint it, there's two things you got to know. One, you can go down to your Coyote dealer, get the Coyote orange right from them. Two, you can get Duplicolor Chevy orange engine paint from Canadian Tire or Amazon. I'll put a link down below. And it's very, very close. I can't tell the difference between it and the Coyote orange. Now, the reason I don't have it to paint that right now is it's on back order, so I got to go and find it somewhere. So in the meantime, appreciate all you guys watching. Any questions at all, put it down below, and we'll see you guys all next time.
one last thing. If you could do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, click on the bell, you'll get all kinds of notifications as new videos come your way. Thanks for watching.